One week remains as we look at what teams are in, who is on the bubble, and who is playing for nothing but pride this weekend. We'll begin with that District 2-5A picture. And, of course, George, we know some of the teams that are already in the playoffs. Coronado and Monterey, two teams we're keeping an eye on because they can control but need some help also to try and get into this postseason. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Amarillo and Tascos are in. They are the two representatives in Division Two. Central is in. They're going to be in Division One because no matter what tiebreakers happen, Central has clinched a playoff spot. So it's up to Coronado and Monterey to figure out that last playoff spot. Now, Coronado has the easier path. If they win, they are in. If Coronado loses, they are in as long as Tascosa beats Central and, and, and the matchup goes, you know, the Tascosa should be favored in that thing. Now, for Monterey, it's different. Monterey needs to beat Lubbock High, and then they need Central to beat Tascosa because if it ends up in a three-way tie between Central, Coronado, and Monterey, Central is in. Coronado is going to be in because of the positive points tiebreaker. What Monterey needs is for Central to win and for Coronado to lose. That way the tie happens between uh, Monterey and Coronado. And in that instance, the 28-27 game that Monterey won over Coronado, the Plainsman would leapfrog the Mustangs and be in the playoffs as that four seed. All right, so I figured out we just need to make a calculator to figure out all these different teams each season when we're going through these because God bless George for taking all this. I just kind of help pass they, it along. They told me I wasn't going to have to do math in this job, but every year I keep having to it's do this. Lie. Math. It's always is, is, a lie. Is, is it math or is it probability? I don't know. I, I didn't take that course in college either. All I right, guess. well, luckily this one, figuring out the probability of Cooper or Estacado making the playoffs is pretty <laughs> simple because they are both in. They are basically just playing for the outright district title in this game. Yeah. One's going to be in Division One. one's going to be in Division Two, and apparently we even know who they're going to be playing already. Absolutely, you know, and, and that's the, this is the easiest district because, like you said, Corna, or, uh, Estacado and, and Cooper are playing for the district championship. Cooper has already clinched the, the Division One representative seed. Estacado has already clinched the uh, number one seed in Division Two. So the, the, the re what remains is Brownfield and Shallowater are down there. They're going to be playing for the, the uh, last playoff seed as the uh, number two seed in Division Two. Now, the, you mentioned it. The interesting thing is the first round that they are paired up with, they're paired up with that 1-3A district up in the Panhandle that has Pampa and Borger and Dalhart and Perryton. Well, that district is done. They scheduled their deal to where they would have a bye going into the playoffs. And so all those teams are off this week. They've already played their 10-game schedule, and the, the three representatives have already been determined. Pampa is the number is the Division One representative, so it's going to be Pampa and Cooper in the first round of the playoffs in by district. Uh, Estacado is going to get Dalhart. Dalhart is going to be the number one seed in in, in Division Two, and so then and then you go down, and the winner of Brownfield and Shallowater is going to play Borger. They are the or, or, yeah the, they're going to play Borger in that in that uh, in that scenario. So because they're the number two seed in Division Two, Borger finished in, as the district champion, so they're the number one seed in Division Two out of that district. So yeah, and the interesting deal you know that makes my job on Saturday a lot easier because I already know the matchups that are going to happen. And so that one. I don't have to, to spend too much time on that one's an easy one right there. All right, so let's to go to a harder one now. Going to 5-3A, <laughs> we know that Brownwood is in. Then you still have Snyder, Abilene Wiley, and Big Spring trying to fight for those playoff mm -hmm. spots. And this is one that's full of those ands, ifs, and ors, ors. inside of it. Yeah, th this is this is the uh, conjunction district right here because <laughs> you got the ands, the ors, the ifs, the buts. The, you know, it's it's real simple. Brownwood is in. You know, the number one team in the state. They ought to be in by now. They, they are and they are in. They're going to be the number one seed in division in division two. Snyder can clinch a playoff berth if they beat Big Spring. They'll finish second in that district, and they would be the number two seed in Division Two. Now, where it gets iffy is is here. You know, Snyder plays Big Spring, and Abilene Wiley plays Brownwood. Now, Brownwood should beat Abilene Wiley. Snyder should beat Big Spring, and if and if that happens, then Abilene Wiley will clinch the play, final playoff spot because they beat Big Spring head to head. They'd finish tied, and everything would be, you know, or they would finish a game ahead. And now, if if Big Spring were to win. And, and Abilene were to lose, then you're talking about a whole different scenario. You're talking about, you know, Snyder being thrown into the mix. You're talking about Abilene Wiley being thrown into the mix. You're talking about Big Spring being thrown into the mix. And, and Abilene Wiley or Big Spring is going to be the Division I representative. So there's a lot to still be played for out there. Big Spring still has time you know, or still has, a, you know, the, the way, a ways to go. The Abilene Wiley can get in. So it's, it's a real big mess in 5-3-A, but it should be pretty simple once it gets sorted out. We know after the change this year, of course, that 2A and downward split into already Division I and Division II. So we know about Idaho, Muleshoe, Littlefield, a bunch of those teams. But now you go into 1A, Division I. We know that Sundown, as you mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, is in. Then you have New Deal, Tohoka, and Hale Center still trying to figure out 
who's going to be having probably a share of that title and who's going to be taking that number one seat, of course. Right. You know, and we mentioned earlier, New Deal is in control of its own destiny. If it beats Hale Center, the Lions are in. Tahoka is in control of its own destiny. If they beat Alton, they are in. And, that, and that's really the simplest way to do it. Uh, you know, Hale Center, you know, can, can find a way to get in. They, they can find a way to get in by the positive points, but they need a really big game. I think they've got to win by 15. If, if New Deal, Tahoka, and, and Hale Center all end up tied, they're going to have to win by the maximum 15 and, and, and really kind of cancel everything out. What needs to happen for Hale Center is they need to beat New Deal and then Tahoka to go ahead and lose. That way, Hale Center would, would leapfrog New Deal and be in. And, and, and there's, a, there's actually a way that New Deal could be out. There's a, there's a way that Tahoka can be out. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of room, wiggle room in that district as well. But like we said, the way the matchups go, you know, New Deal should beat Hell Center. Tahoka should beat Alton. And that, that will really solve the thing very simply. All right, up next, stay tuned to find out who George thinks can make that final push when we come back on the final picks for the 2010 regular season.